ketosis. When you're fasting, you get into ketosis, right? Which um, has a lot of benefits. Um, but then you, you'll be in ketosis only for a, a, reason, a short period of time, I mean, like a couple of hours. So is there benefits to having like a ketogenic diet and trying to be in ketosis for an extended period, maybe a week or something like that? Could be short term. The, the thing with the ketogenic diets is uh, it's important to consume good fats and high protein intake is bad from an aging standpoint. Mm. That's firmly established. Uh, we Americans take in way too much protein. And I could explain why it's bad and get into what's happening at the cellular level. But essentially, if you take in a lot of protein, the ability of your cells to remove garbage is impaired. Mm -hmm. It's a process called autophagy. Um, and um, so the switching back and forth between uh, fasting and eating, exercise and resting, that seems to optimize health because during the fasting or exercise, autophagy is increased, protein synthesis is decreased in cells. They don't grow, get bigger during the exercise. And then during the recovery period, uh, protein synthesis goes up, the cells grow. Um, yeah, but anyway, ketogenic diet, the other thing is, I think it's good to have a variety of uh, vegetables and fruits and there's chemicals in those fruits that do good things to cells. Uh, I wrote an article for Scientific American in 2015, which uh, the main point was that many of the chemicals in fruits and vegetables uh, that are good for our health, the reason they're in the fruits and vegetables is to keep insects and us from eating too much of the. So they're actually natural pesticides in a way, mm. uh, anti-feedants. But during evolution, it was to our advantage to be able to tolerate these chemicals because there's energy and, and, and other nutrients in the fruits and vegetables. Uh, so if you're eating a ketogenic diet, um, of course, fruits have carbs. So any anytime you take in carbs, it, the, you're going to uh, reduce ketone production. Right. From the fats in the, the ketogenic diet. Right. So I remember, I, I think I watched your, the, you did a podcast with uh, Dave Asprey, I believe. And you talked about the kind of ketones being, I guess, biphasic. There, there was two levels where after 12 hours, you had some levels of ketones in your body, but then there was like another level. So um, I, I guess two questions. So when does the second level happen and how important is it to get to that level? I mean, if we just have a small amount, is that giving us the benefit? Yeah, the first elevation occurs at about 12 hours of fasting. Mm -hmm. It goes from ketone levels will go from essentially undetectable up to around a couple hundred uh, micromolar. And then they stay about that level till 24 hours. And then by between 24 and 48 hours, they go up to one or two millimolar. Mm. So they increase by a factor of five to 10 fold. Now, a lot of the human studies have been done with these shorter fasting periods that you know aren't two days, complete fasting, two days or more. Um, and clearly there's benefits that are being shown of the, the, the short, uh, shorter fasting period with the initial smaller rise in ketone levels. Um, there are some investigators who've looked at longer term fasting. Walter Longo at USC has a protocol where five days in a row, uh, you eat only about I think it's 700 calories, six or 700 calories. 
And so for a lot of that time period, they'll be in ketogenic state. And, um, and so like want do that once a month. And he sees health benefits in both in humans. Actually, it's a little harder to do in animals because you, a rat or, or mice, if you do a complete fast for more than three or four days, they die. Right. So, um, and then there are uh, some some studies with very with a week or ten days of fasting. For example, in Germany, there's clinics where people go in uh, <clears throat> like a resort, and, and they go there and stay for a couple of weeks, and they're on fasting for seven to ten days straight. And and there are a few publications where uh, the investigators measure whatever insulin, glucose, um, body fat, et cetera, keep, uh, before they start on the fasting and at the end of the seven or 10 days and document changes occurring, but they don't really follow those people up long-term. And I doubt that doing that once a year, which a lot of them do, has any major long-term benefits. The, the benefits may last a few weeks, uh, but then if they go back to their normal eating pattern, uh, you know, things will go back to the way they were. It's like right. exercise. If, if you're in shape and you stop exercising for a few weeks, you'll, you'll know it. You'll notice it. You, you know, you, the benefits will diminish. Yes. Yeah, I noticed that with COVID. It's can't get to the gym. And, um, so can I ask you if, um, so I have a friend who, uh, who, who eats probably a normal diet, right? It's too much carbs. And so then he, he did like a 24 hour fast. Um, and he, he was like really tired in the middle of the afternoon. So one of the, one of the benefits of doing intermittent fasting is you get metabolic flexibility. So do you have, uh, like an opinion on how long that takes to develop and is there any way that you can make it happen faster, like exogenous ketones or? I have a, a very good idea on how long it takes to adapt uh, for all your organ systems, brain to adapt to intermittent mm -hmm. fasting, eating pattern, and it takes two weeks to a month. Right. You know, so if someone wants to change their eating pattern to say daily time restricted eating and they wanna do uh, 18 six, uh, if they just do that uh, cold turkey, uh, they're not gonna. They're gonna be hungry and irritable and not able to concentrate during the time period that they would have previously been eating. Those initial side effects, uh, while while your systems, neuroendocrine and other systems are adapting, will disappear within two to four weeks. And that. And we've noted that in human studies and in animals, we've actually documented at the cellular level that adaptations to intermittent fasting take about the same time period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and uh, we had an article, review article in New England Journal of Medicine at the end of 2019. And in that article, which people can find easily on the internet. We, at the end of the article, we give some practical advice for physicians and people uh, on how to uh, initiate and, and stick with a intermittent fasting eating pattern. But essentially it's kind of like exercise program. So in the case of intermittent fasting, if, you, if your goal is 18-6 daily time restricted eating. Well, maybe for a month you can do 14-10. Okay. Yeah. You know, do that for a month and then go to uh, whatever, 16-8 for a month and then go to 18-6 uh, for a month, uh, your final goal. You know, again, analogous to exercise where you have to adapt. Uh, build a little bit at a time. Yeah. 
I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.